Welcome to the Harris County Flood Control District's virtual community engagement meeting to discuss drainage improvements at Anderson Road and C144-00-00. This virtual community meeting is being offered by the Flood Control District to share vital information with the community. My name is Imelda Vera with the Flood Control District Communications Team, and I am joined tonight by a team of Flood Control District leadership and subject matter experts to ensure we continue to keep you up to date on this important flood mitigation projects in your community. We're also joined by staff from area elected officials offices and community associations. We are glad to see the community so engaged in these projects and we look forward to continuing to share updates and keeping you all in the community involved. First, we would like to begin tonight's meeting with remarks from Harris County Precinct 1 Commissioner Rodney Ellis. Hi, I'm Rodney Ellis. Thanks to everyone for participating in this important flood control district community meeting about the C144-00-00 conveyance improvements in the Sims Bayou watershed. Every community deserves to have increased protection from flooding. That's why equity is our guiding principle in assigning our infrastructure investments. As with all projects, we want to be transparent by giving you updates and seeking your important input. Of course, this is your project that's designed to protect your homes and businesses. Also, we're prioritizing communities that are most vulnerable to flooding and have historically taken the longest to recover. The drainage improvements at Anderson Road and C144-00-00, a project seek to reduce flood risk in the neighborhoods adjacent to the tributary between Fuquay Street and Beltway 8. To improve improvement drainage in the area, Precinct 1 and Harris County Engineering Department are working on a street and drainage project along Anderson Road crossing the channel. Combining the improvement uh, efforts between Precinct 1, Harris County Engineering, and flood control, will save money on construction and minimize disruption to the local area by not having to reconstruct Anderson Road again when the flood control district project goes into construction in coming years. I wanna thank the flood control district for its work on the channel and our engineering department for its assistance on the Anderson Road and drainage project. Together, the work will improve quality of life uh, by mitigating flooding in your neighborhood and improving traffic flow on Anderson Road. Finally, I know it's a long message, but thank you for participating in this meeting and for your patience during the upcoming construction. Again, this is Rodney Ellis, your County Commissioner, and thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ellis. We appreciate you joining us tonight for this meeting. This virtual public meeting will begin with a presentation to share project updates, including an overview of the tributary C144-00-00 conveyance improvements project, the project timeline, and next steps. The presentation will be followed by a virtual question and answer session with flood control district team members. Attendees will be able to submit comments and questions through the website or by phone. Any comments not addressed during the Q&A session will receive a response from the Flood Control District after the close of the comment period. Instructions on how to participate in the virtual meeting are included on this slide, on this virtual meeting webpage, and on the Flood Control District website. I will also share a reminder of this instruction when we reach the Q&A portion of the meeting. We will now transition to Jonathan St. Romain, Capital Project South Department Manager with Flood Control District, who will share information about the Flood Control District and this project. Jonathan, over to you. Thank you, Imelda, and a special thanks to each of you for joining us here tonight. And this presentation will give you a brief overview of this project. But before we get to project specifics, we want to share with you some information about the Flood Control District. The Harris County Flood Control District is a special purpose district and it was created by the Texas legislature in 1937 in response to devastating floods that hit the Houston area in 1929 and 1935. The Flood Control District is governed by the Harris County Commissioner's Court and works closely with other entities in our region 
such as the Harris County Engineering Department and the City of Houston. The organization was created in part to serve as a local partner to leverage federal funding for flood damage reduction projects. And our mission has expanded since our founding, leading to billions of dollars in federal, state, and locally funded infrastructure improvements in the ground. The mission of the Harris County Flood Control District is to provide flood damage reduction projects that work with appropriate regard for community and natural values. And one of the most difficult challenges we face is constructing effective projects that are sensitive to community and natural values in a highly urbanized area. Harris County includes 23 main watersheds, totaling approximately 1,800 square miles and more than 2,500 linear miles of channel. There we go. 2,500 miles is approximately the distance from New York to California. A watershed is a geographical region of land that drains to a common channel or outlet. Each watershed has its own unique, unique characteristics and needs. And the project we're presenting tonight is in the Sims Bayou watershed, located in Southwest Harris County in Precinct 1. Our area is flood prone, and here are some reasons why. We receive extreme rainfall, including that from tropical storms and hurricanes, we have flat, slow draining land and clay soils that do not soak up excess rainfall quickly. And while the flood control district plays a critical role in flood risk reduction, we are one of several entities involved in these efforts in our region. When rain falls on your roof, it flows through several jurisdictions such as streets and drains managed by the Harris County Engineering Department, a municipal utility district or a city such as the city of Houston before it flows into a larger creek, channel, or bayou that the flood control district owns and maintains. This slide illustrates the various jurisdictions which sometimes we even share with other entities. Inside neighborhoods, as shown on the left side of this illustration, storm sewers and roadside ditches collect stormwater runoff and start the process of moving it away from streets and homes. Storm sewers and roadside ditches are the responsibility of the underlying municipality. The larger bayous and channels that take the collected stormwater and move it through our drainage system to Galveston Bay are the responsibility of the flood control district. This is shown on the right side of the illustration. In the middle is a stormwater detention basin, sometimes constructed by the flood control district. When storm sewers on the left are increased, this creates an increase in runoff. Since it is our policy to avoid any adverse impacts from our projects, detention basins help to safely take in and temporarily store excess stormwater during heavy rain events. Often we partner with Harris County precincts, utility districts, and others to add recreational amenities such as trails to these basins and along our channels. On August 25, 2018, Harris County voters approved $2.5 billion in bonds for flood risk reduction projects. This vote, allowed, this vote followed a series of meetings across Harris County in each watershed, which resulted in a list of what is now 181 bond projects. As of August 25, 2021, every project included in the 2018 bond program has been initiated, including 10 projects in the Sims Bayou watershed. A total of more than $1.35 billion in partnership funding has been secured so far to stretch the 2018 bond program even farther. The actual timing of each individual project will depend on a variety of factors, including environmental permitting, right-of-way acquisition, and utility relocation, and in some cases, requirements of a particular grant. That said, project lists and projected schedules are updated regularly on our website. And while the bond was for $2.5 billion, the full cost of every project in the bond tables is almost $5 billion. So we made it clear from the outset that we would need funding partners to fully construct the projects in the bond program. As I mentioned, we've had some success so far having secured more than $1.35 billion in partner funds. And this graphic illustrates the many sources of those partnerships, including federal, state, and local funding that the Flood Control District is working to secure for Harris County. Each agency has its own definition of eligible projects and its own requirements for local match funding. 
So the flood control district works diligently to match projects to the right partnership opportunities. And we'll now move into the part of the program that is specifically about the Sims Bayou watershed and drainage improvements at Anderson Road and C144-00-00 project. The drainage improvements at Anderson Road and C144 projects seeks to reduce flood risks adjacent to the channel we at the Flood Control District call Unit C144-00-00, or just C144 for short. The C144 tributary is located in Southwest Harris County, Precinct 1, within the upper reach of the Sims Bayou watershed. The project limits can be seen on this map in the area highlighted in red. The Sims Bayou watershed covers about 94 square miles and includes two primary streams, Sims Bayou and Berry Bayou. There are about 121 miles of open streams within the watershed, including the primary streams and a tributary channels. Structural flooding has occurred numerous times along Sims Bayou and its tributaries. The majority of the structures that are flood prone, flood prone were built prior to the existence of detailed floodplain maps and prior to floodplain management regulations. However, the recently completed Sims Bayou Federal Project, which includes channel improvements and two regional stormwater detention basins in the upper reaches of the watershed, has significantly reduced the risk of flooding along Sims Bayou. And here's a closer look at the project area. C-144 is a small tributary of Sims Bayou east of Hiram Clark Road that is about 1.6 miles long, extending from Beltway 8 north to Sims Bayou. Note that the channel runs from south to north and crosses under two main roads, Fuquay Street and Anderson Road. On the eastern side of the C-144 channel is the city of Houston's Wild Heather Park. The existing C-144 channel is quite narrow and has steep, si steep side slopes. During moderate rain events, flooding can occur outside of the C-144 channel and existing detention facilities causing ponding on roadways or lawns. During extreme rain events, some structural flooding can occur. As mentioned earlier, the risk of structural flooding for areas along Sims Bayou has been significantly reduced with the completion of the Sims Bayou Federal Project. However, there is an opportunity to further reduce flood risks in areas south of Sims Bayou and adjacent to the C-144 channel with additional drainage improvements. But before we go into detail about the Flood Control District C-144 project, we want to share with you a related project. The Harris County Engineering Department in Precinct 1 also have a project underway in this area along Anderson Road from Hiram Clark Road to Almeda Road. The project includes improvements to the existing roadway, drainage system, and sidewalks. The existing asphalt road will be upgraded to a concrete roadway with a new traffic signal at the Hiram Clark intersection. And to reduce street flooding, the current roadside ditches will be replaced with underground storm sewers. Sidewalks will be added to both sides of the roadway to provide safe access for pedestrians. And as part of the project, a new stormwater detention basin is being constructed on the western side of the C-144 channel. Throughout this presentation, we'll be using terms like the 100-year and 10-year rain event or storm events. So let's go ahead and discuss what that means. Using the 100-year storm event as an example, this is a rainfall event that has a 1% chance of occurring in any given year. So in addition to being called a 100-year storm event, it can also be referred to as a 1% annual chance event. This does not mean that if we have a 1% annual chance event today, that it will be another 100 years before it occurs again. Rather, it means that in any given year, we have a 1% chance of a 100-year storm event occurring. And this is simply a measure of the expected chance of a specific rainfall event based on historical data. So now that we're familiar with the project location, storm frequencies, and the nearby Harris County Engineering Roadway project, let's move on to the Flood Control District's C-144 project history and purpose. 
In August of 2020, the Flood Control District initiated a feasibility study to evaluate several high-level concepts to help reduce structural flooding and flood risks to the area adjacent to the C-144 channel. It was determined that the existing C-144 channel has a capacity to convey and contain within its banks about a 10-year storm event. Several alternatives incorporating various improvements, such as channel widening, stormwater detention basins, and culvert rehabilitation were, ev were evaluated to improve the capacity of the C-144 channel and allow for greater drainage performance during more extreme storm events. This feasibility study resulted in two recommended project components for the C-144 channel. The first is the design and construction of an additional four foot by three foot culvert located to be located underneath Anderson Road. And the second is the design and construction of a stormwater detention basin downstream of Anderson Road. The additional four foot by three foot box culvert will provide additional stormwater conveyance by the C-144 channel, and the downstream detention basin will mitigate any adverse impact due to the increased flows. By providing this additional conveyance at Anderson Road and mitigation detention downstream, water surface elevations within the C-144 channel will be reduced during storm events and the overall C-144 watershed's drainage performance will increase. The existing C-144 channel has an eight foot by five foot rectangular stormwater culvert to flow underneath Anderson Road. And now we're proposing to add a second culvert, a four foot by three foot box culvert. A stormwater culvert is a tunnel-like structure, either a pipe or rectangular box, that is constructed to provide stormwater conveyance beneath the road, railroad, or other surface facility to allow its continued normal operation. The first proposed component of the drainage improvements at Anderson Road and C-144 project is the design and construction of this additional four foot by three foot culvert located at Anderson Road and C-144. This second culvert will allow for greater conveyance and capacity of the C-144 channel. This will prevent water from backing up upstream of Anderson Road, as well as allow for future maintenance work to the C-144 channel and culverts at roadway crossings. Through a partnership with Harris County Engineering Department, the Flood Control District was able to move forward with the construction of this four foot by three foot culvert now with the Precinct 1 Anderson Road project that we already mentioned. This partnership helps reduce project costs and minimize disturbance to the area. The second component in the drainage improvements at Anderson Road and C-144 project is the design and construction of a stormwater detention basin. With the addition of the four foot by three foot culvert at Anderson Road and C-144, there's a need to create additional detention downstream of Anderson Road to mitigate for flow and water surface elevation increases caused by the culvert. Stormwater detention basins provide storage for runoff of floodwaters. This storage is temporary and prevents water from overwhelming channels. When channel stormwater levels drop back down, the stored stormwater drains back into the channel by gravity via outfall pipes appropriately sized to drain the basin. While all stormwater detention basins essentially function the same way, they can be designed in many different configurations. There are two main types of detention basins, of stormwater detention basins, wet bottom detention basins and dry bottom detention basins. Both types fill up and temporarily hold stormwater during a storm event. A wet bottom stormwater detention basin has a permanent pool of water, which helps with aesthetics and water quality. The area above the wet bottom, all the way up to the top of the basin banks, is what is available for additional stormwater storage. As its name implies, a dry bottom stormwater detention basin features a dry basin with a grassy lining designed to drain dry after each rain event. Each alternative allows for potential partnerships with other local entities that may wish to build recreational amenities such as trails 
While the flood control district does not build these features, we do coordinate with entities that do. So when possible, our facilities can support dual purposes, flood risk mitigation and recreation. When we talk about stormwater detention basins, we talk about how much stormwater they can hold in a unit of measure called acre feet. That measure refers to the volume of water one foot deep over one acre. For context, one acre foot equals approximately 325,851 gallons. Think of one football field covered with one foot of water. Flood control district engineers and environmental specialists are in the process of evaluating possible alternatives for creating 22 acre feet of needed mitigation detention or the equivalent of 22 football fields, each covered with one foot of water. And this brings us to where we are today in the drainage improvements at Anderson Road and C-144 project. This illustration represents the typical life cycle of a flood redu reduction project. As construction of the culvert is already underway, the preliminary engineering stage for this project is focused on identifying and evaluating possible alternatives for the stormwater detention basin, as well as other design considerations. There are several criteria in mind as we evaluate possible alternatives, with the most important being hydraulic or drainage benefits provided to the total to the project area, such as reducing flood risks and mitigating for any increase in flow. But in this project life cycle, we do have several other considerations, including but not limited to overall construction feasibility, the ability to minimize environmental impacts and or provide enhancements determining if any additional right-of-way acquisition may be required for the completion or maintenance of the project, and identifying multi-use opportunities or partnerships to incorporate either recreational or stormwater quality features. Additionally, all alternatives are designed using the Flood Control District's standard design criteria. At the end of this stage, a preliminary engineering report will be prepared that evaluates three proposed alternatives and provides a recommendation for the stormwater detention basin. The preliminary engineering stage for the new stormwater detention basin is expected to be complete this spring and in the spring of 2022. After this stage is complete, next steps include the right-of-way acquisition and utility relocation stage, depending on what is recommended in the preliminary engineering report, and then the design stage, which may overlap with the previous stage since those activities may affect final design considerations. At the same time, construction will continue on the four foot by three foot culvert. Remember, we were able to install this component now through a partnership with Harris County Engineering Department so that Anderson Road will only be under construction once as part of this improvement effort. To prevent adverse impacts to the C-144 channel or surrounding areas, both ends of the additional four foot by three foot culvert will be blocked until construction of the stormwater detention basin for this project is complete. And that brings us to the end of our updates on the drainage improvements at Anderson Road and C-144 project. But before we move to the Q&A portion for this meeting, I'd like to notify you of another bond project from the Harris County Flood Control District nearby, bond ID F-94. Earlier this year, the Flood Control District completed a feasibility study of the C-143-00-00 tributary, which is located just to the east of the C-144 tributary from South, well, South Beltway 8 up to Sims Bayou. The study found drainage problems related to the channel capacity and runoff overflow from this C-144 watershed and local drainage issues in the neighborhoods near the channel. The flood control district is now entering the preliminary engineering stage for proposed improvements. You can sign up for updates on the C-143 tributary project and to be notified of upcoming community meetings at www.hcfcd.org slash F94. 
And I will now turn the program back over to Amelda to kick off the Q&A. Thank you, Jonathan. Before we move into the Q&A, I want to share a quick reminder that we'd love to hear from you on this and other projects moving forward across Harris County. To learn more about this project, ask questions, and sign up for our mailing list, please visit hcfcd.org forward slash F95. As a reminder, there are three ways to submit a comment about this project during tonight's session. You can submit a comment on this site in the box near the presentation live stream, Submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website at hcfcd.org forward slash F95, or submit a comment via phone at 855-925-2801, utilizing meeting code 4246. If you are joining us via phone tonight, please press star to leave a message. Additionally, I want to reiterate that any questions not addressed during tonight's Q&A will receive a response from the Flood Control District following the close of the comment period. Information from this meeting and a recording of the live stream will be available on the Flood Control District's website and YouTube channel. Joining Jonathan for a Q&A session tonight is the project manager for this project, Emmanuel Amida. Now uh, it's time to take some of your questions. Uh, the first question is for Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, Joanne Harrison, who lives on Jupiter Drive, asks why the bayous are always full of water and how will this project help ensure bayous drain dry between heavy rain events? Um, sure. So I'm looking over at Jupiter Drive, and um, there, there could be a couple of things going on there. It looks like you've got a roadside ditch, and so I'm not sure if you're talking about the roadside ditches always being full of water. If, if that's the case, then those roadside ditches would be the jurisdiction of the city of Houston. Now, if you are talking about um, the C-144 channel, which would be just to your east being full, uh, this, this project by adding the additional culvert um, certainly will help with the maintainability. Of, of that channel. Um, the other thing is if that's always full of water uh, and that is a Harris County Flood Control District maintained facility, you can always go to our website. If you go to uh, www.hcfcd.org, right there, I think on the top left uh, side of the page, there's a button or a link that's for a service request. And so you can have uh, our maintenance folks come out and take a look and see if there's any blockages of that channel that's going to help make sure that thing flows flows freely and, and drains dry. Um, oh, and the second part of the question was, um, how, how will this project help to ensure that bayous drain dry during rain events? Um, yeah, with this project and the, the additional culvert and then the detention basin, just the additional capacity is going to help. And, um, and, and also as part of this, we are looking at uh, making sure that we have better maintenance access so that that can then happen more regularly and we can do a better job of that. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, we have Ms. White asking if, if we are only taking comments via phone. Um, the answer to that is no, we are taking uh, comments via phone, but we're also, you're also able to submit a comment on this site in the box near the presentation live stream. Uh, you can start typing your question there and just click the submit button. You can also submit a comment on the flood control district website at hcfcd.org forward slash F95. Um, another question also from Ms. White uh, for Emmanuel. This question is for you. Uh, she is asking, um, what's the latest status of the Precincts Anderson Road project and how long will the project last? Uh, thank you so much for that question. Um, now the Precinct 1 Anderson Road project is currently and is currently um, about, it's about 48% um, on time and um, and uh, it's expected to, you know, continue. Con the construction is expected to go through this fall. So hopefully, maybe by the end of fall, um, and into winter, as when it will hopefully be completed. Thank you so much for that information. Uh, the next question is for Jonathan. Uh, how was this project identified? Um, yeah. So this project was identified. Um, during the development of our 2018 bond program. And it is one of the, uh, the bond 
projects uh, underneath the Sims Bayou watershed. Um, and from that, uh, our planning group, which does our hydraulics and, and our, our hydrology, uh, those folks developed a feasibility study that came up with the solution that we're talking about today, which is the culvert underneath Anderson Road combined with the detention basin. And, and so this project, along with a number of others in the Sims Bayou watershed was developed along with the 2018 bond program. And um, as a reminder, in, uh, as we developed this, the bond program, the flood control district held a series of meetings in each watershed to talk to the community about each of, of the, um, the projects that would be included in there. Thank you for that information. Uh, the next question is for Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel, we're being asked to speak a little bit more on the goal of the project. All right, thank you so much for that again. Uh, now, the goal of this project is generally to contribute to the overall uh, flood damage reduction effort in the Sims Bio watershed. And this is uh, by improving the ability of the C-144 drainage system to carry and convey storm water without uh, overflowing. Great, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. The next question is for Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, when will construction on this project start? Um, yeah, always, always a good question. Everybody, we all wanna know how, how soon everything is gonna get done and when construction is gonna start. Unfortunately, we can't say exactly right now because we still have a couple of steps in that project life cycle to go through. And so we need uh, our consultant team to uh, finish developing and finalizing this preliminary engineering report in this project stage and, and then potentially uh, go into a right of way or property acquisition stage. Um, and then we would go through the design. And so what we'll do is once we get into the design stage, we'll come back to everybody and we'll have a much more clear picture on when construction would start and, and we will have another community engagement meeting at that point. Thank you. Uh, the next question is for Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel, what is the exact area of this project? Uh, thank you, Melda. Um, now, the, the C-144 channel is located east of Hiram Clark, and uh, it extends about 1.6 miles. Uh, that's south of Sims Bayou and extends all the way to Beltway 8. And uh, now the drainage improvements project uh, focuses on the area that's right between Anderson Road and uh, Fuqua Street. Thank you for that information. Uh, Jonathan, we have another question for you. Uh, can you tell us more about the Sims Bayou Federal Project? Oh, um, yes, I can try. Uh, the, the Sims Bayou um, Federal Flood Damage Reduction Project began way back in 1990 and that was completed in late 2015. And so this was a partnership project between the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the Harris County Flood Control District. Uh, it included 19.3 miles of bayou enlargements and environmental enhan enhancements um, along Sims Bayou that, that started uh, way down downstream at the Houston Ship Channel and then ended all the way upstream just west of South Post Oak Road. Uh, the federal project included um, the replacement or modification of 22 bridges that cross Sims Bayou. Um, the federal project was supplemented by construction of three large stormwater detention basins on Sims Bayou. Um, and these basins were excavated using local funds. So the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers was the lead agency for the project. And as the local sponsor, which often happens in, in these uh, situations where we receive federal money, we have to have uh, a local sponsor that provides some funding uh, to assist with the project. And um, as is typical, the flood control district was responsible for things like property acquisition and utility relocation and the modification or enhancement of the bridges, which, which I mentioned a, a second ago. Um, and so those were all designed to minimize obstruction to the flow of the, uh, the stormwater in Sims Bayou. Um, 
And so this uh, federal project uh, has, has been a success and has, has steadily reduced uh, the risk of flood risk in the area. Thank you so much for that thorough explanation, Jonathan. Uh, we have a question for Emmanuel. Does the Precinct 1 Anderson Road project impact the Flood Control District's project? Uh, thank you, Melda, again. Um, now, the Precinct 1 project at Anderson Road uh, does not impact the flood control project. Instead, the, the two projects actually work together, and uh, they work together to reduce flood risks uh, to the local drainage system and you know, the area roadways. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan, question for you. Um, you mentioned that the 4x3 culvert is additional. Is there already a culvert in this area? Yes, there, there already is a culvert underneath Anderson Road along, um, there you go, we got a picture on the screen there. Uh, there's a culvert underneath Anderson Road uh, along the C-144 channel so that the channel can pass its flow through or, or underneath that road crossing. And, and there is an existing eight foot by five foot uh, box culvert there today. And, and so that's how water uh, today flows um, from south to north underneath Anderson Road all the way up to Sims Bayou. And so the four by three culvert that we're proposing now is additional, and that's going to provide the additional uh, stormwater conveyance along the channel. Thank you so much for that information. And it looks like we have a bit of a follow-up question to what you spoke on. Uh, they're asking if there definitely will be covered culverts on both sides of Anderson Road along the entire length from 521 to Hiram Park Road with sidewalks. So I think you are asking about uh, what would be um, uh, storm sewer along the road. And, and um, just as a point of clarification, when we talk about culverts, we're talking about uh, would, when a, a road crosses over a channel, the culvert would be placed perpendicular to the road to, to convey that channel underneath it. Uh, when we talk about storm sewers um, that are along the road, essentially as a replacement for roadside ditches, uh, we would just call that uh, underground storm sewer. And, and so with that clarification, it sounds like you're specifically asking about Harris County's uh, construction of the Anderson Road project. Um, yes, that, that's what I understand uh, from our, our partners over at Harris County Engineering is that um, well, you'll have uh, both sides of Anderson Road, no, no longer roadside ditches. You'd have underground storm sewers with sidewalks. Um, but we will definitely get back to you and confirm that for you after the meeting, just to make sure that we're passing along to you the correct information. Absolutely. Thank you for that information. Uh, we're getting some questions about why this meeting was not held in person. Uh, we just want to let everyone know that uh, due to the pandemic that began a couple of years ago, uh, the flood control district decided to go to a virtual space to continue to keep the community up to date with all our flood mitigation projects, um, just as an over precaution due to the pandemic. All right, jumping back to the rest of the project questions uh, for you, Jonathan. Sandra is asking, does the county have programs to raise people's homes? The county does not have programs to raise people's homes in in some locations, uh, there are um, there are areas that we would call voluntary buyout areas that, that the flood control district has designated, um, and, and the flood control district could buy out your home. I, I don't think that any of those areas are are nearby to the the spot that we're talking about here tonight. Um, but uh, no, we don't have any in home raising programs. Thank you for that information. And I want to thank everyone that is able to join us today virtually. I um, mean, we want you to become part of the conversation. Just a quick reminder, uh, if you are joining us tonight, uh, whether digitally or over the phone, you can submit a comment on this site in the box near the presentation live stream. 
You can also submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website at hcfcd.org forward slash F95 or submit a comment via phone at 855-925-2801 utilizing meeting code 4246. And if you are joining us via phone tonight, you can press star to leave a message. Okay, a couple more questions here. A question for Emmanuel. Uh, Linda asked, how will this project benefit Wild Heather Park sub subdivision? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Melda, for that. That's indeed a very good question. Now, um, I, I hope I got the Wild Heather Park subdivision location right, but I believe it's adjacent to the park. Now, um, since that entire area is adjacent to C144, I mean, the goal of this project is to reduce the risk of flooding in the, you know, in the, in the areas around or adjacent to C144. So the goal is really to, you know, reduce the, the risk of flooding to that subdivision and all areas adjacent to um, or close to C-144 and generally in the C-144 uh, watershed. Thank you so much for that information. Uh, Jonathan, another question for you. What is the difference between the C-144 channel tributary and the C-144 watershed? Um, sure. So the C-144 tributary is the channel itself, just the, the actual uh, the actual stream there. Um, and the C-144 watershed is the area around it that drains to it. And so um, sometimes, yeah, I, I, those, those things can be confusing. But when we talk about the tributary, we're talking about the channel itself and, and the watershed is the area that's surrounding it. And um, to, to add a little bit to the, the previous question about how how this project could help the wild heather subdivision you know when when uh channel conveyance is increased and stormwater detention is added uh what happens is during during these heavy rain events uh the the, the peak level we call it water surface elevations the peak level that the water would rise to in that channel in that tributary uh, ends up not being as high as it would have before after the project is done. And so we, so we do these infrastructure improvements to lower the peak water surface elevation um, in, in that channel. And so the neighboring subdivisions that drain into it, either by roadside ditch or storm sewer, all of those perform better. And so there's a couple of things that happen there is at first you, you'd have uh, less of a risk of the channel itself overspilling its banks into your neighborhood streets. Uh, and the second thing is with less water in that channel, your individual street storm sewers and roadside ditches all perform better during those storm events. Thank you so much for that information. Another question for Emmanuel. Um, Emmanuel, how does the flood control district determine whether a stormwater detention basin will be wet bottom or dry bottom? Thank you, Imelda, for that question. Now, the uh, flood control district um, evaluates, you know, multiple factors uh, when uh, determining, you know, which type of uh, basin to to adopt. And uh, some of the factors include, you know, hydraulics and hydrology environmental and community considerations among others. Now for each alternative that they look at, uh, you know, they, they, they have to weigh the pros and cons that can allow for, you know, various environmental and community benefits, as well as potential partnerships with other local entities that may wish to build recreational amenities such as trails. Thank you so much for that information. Um, another question for you, Emmanuel. Uh, one of our viewers, Tang, is asking about the schedule of the precinct project and when will it be completed? Can you touch again a little bit more on that? Um, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for that question again. Um, now we will, I'll, I'll need to get, we need to get back to you on the actual timeline of the project, but uh, the latest we know is, um, the latest we know is that they have uh, done some installation of uh, the culverts underneath Anderson Road as of the latest um, um, project update meeting we, we had. And uh, but other is regarding the timeline as in when it will be completed the exact month, 
or you know we will need to get back to you on that thank you mario a question for jonathan jonathan cynthia is asking is it illegal to raise a property that may flood your neighbor why was an entire subdivision allowed to build several feet above existing homes on Ramos, Jupiter, and Mondrad? So I'm not sure if it is illegal. I, I would say it's probably not illegal to raise a property. Um, there's a lot of things involved in raising properties. I am not familiar with the specific instance that, uh, that you're talking about. Um, you know, when, whenever... Uh, we, well, there are certainly rules that are associated with a floodplain, and so if if there's anything in the flood, any fill that goes in the floodplain, an equal amount of material or or dirt has to be removed from the floodplain, and there's there's stringent a, a stringent approval process on things like that. So I'm not sure if the area that you're mentioning is in the floodplain or not. Um, there, and, and there's certainly a lot to it. Uh, we we can check into it and um, and let you know about uh, what would have happened there at, at that particular spot. Uh, sure, thank you so much for that information. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, Jonathan or Emmanuel, whoever wants to answer this one, um, are there any plans for recreational amenities? Um, sure, I can take it. Uh, we're not quite there yet. Um, we, don't, we don't have those specifics and um, I'll, I'll mention that uh, very often or very frequently flood control district projects um, do take that into account and, and our typical or standard design criteria does allow space for, uh, for features such as trails um, adjacent to or around our facilities. Uh, the flood control district does not construct these, um, but we do coordinate with entities that do and that could be the city of Houston or Houston Parks Board or, or other entity that would be interested in building a trail or a park adjacent to one of our facilities. And so um, when we come back to you in our design stage, we would have more information about that. Great information to share. Thank you so much for that. A uh, question for Emmanuel, how much detention is needed and how, how is the amount of needed detention calculated? Thank you, Melda. Um, now, it's um, the, 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 the detention that is needed is approximately 22 acre feet of detention volume, and uh, it's needed to downstream of Anderson Road, and that's because the culvert, the 4 by 3 culvert is installed right at underneath Anderson Road. And the 22 acre feet is equivalent to 22 football fields, each field with one foot of water. Now, this number is determined by comparison of uh, volumes in the C-144 channel before and after installing the additional four by three culvert at Anderson Road. Thank you for that information. Uh, question for Jonathan, will there be any right-of-way acquisition or utility relocation needed? Um, potentially, and, and we're looking at that uh, in this preliminary engineering report, and that's or in, in this preliminary engineering stage, and, and those are some of the things that uh, that we look into. I, I think a lot of times folks get a little frustrated when we when we study these uh, these types of projects for what seems like a long time, but uh, these are the sorts of questions that we have to go through to figure out. Um, if right away acquisition is needed, if if utilities, pipelines, or or other features could be in, in our way that we have to uh, design around or, or take into account with the design, and and so uh, that's what we're in the process of figuring out. Thank you so much for that information. Uh, another question for Emmanuel. Uh, Taryn is asking if the mentioned detention pond will, will it be a dry or a wet bottom detention basin. All right, uh, thank you. Thank you again, Ms. Imelda. Now, um, the, the, uh, the detention, uh, uh, the stormwater detention basin that uh, the precinct is installing will be a dry uh, bottom uh, type of basin. And then also just to clarify on the previous question uh, regarding the detention that's needed, 
The, the 22 acre feet is an estimate or a target volume, uh, while the actual volume of performance may vary based on the location of the basin and the design of the, you know, the inflow and outflow structures. But otherwise, to your first question or to the, the question you asked, the basin will be a dry bottom type. Thank you so much for that information. Uh, we have a comment coming in. We're receiving specific questions about driveways and the precinct work, which we will share with our precinct and uh, with the HCED after this meeting. Uh, Jonathan, what is the current stage of the project? We're currently in the preliminary engineering stage and, and discussed a minute ago what that entails. That's when our engineering consultant uh, uh, looks at uh, potential alternatives of the project and uh, vets all of those out. We look at things like I mentioned the right-of-way acquisition, utility relocation, uh, environmental investigations to make sure we're following federal law in, in terms of um, uh, wetlands and, and cultural resources and uh, environmental site assessments, things like that. We also uh, have our geotechnical subconsultants look at what's underneath the soil. We've got to know what's under there. And, and so um, you know, the, the, the soils report that's done by our geotechnical consultants uh, aids in the design and it tells us uh, what kind of side slopes we would need um, if there's any um, uh, additional erosion protection that our facilities may need. And so all of these things are incorporated into this preliminary engineering stage, as, as well as the, uh, the, the main topic, of course, which is um, how, much, how much detention we need, what size of culvert do we need, and how, how are these uh, facilities going to perform, and, and what's the best configuration of, of these facilities that's going to provide the most flood risk reduction for the surrounding neighborhood. And, and so that's where we are in this preliminary engineering stage right now. But also, as you can see on this screen, there's a little flag underneath construction because like we mentioned earlier, uh, we were able to fast track the construction of this four by three box culvert to go along with Harris County Engineering's roadway project. And so in order to uh, avoid having to, to disturb Anderson Road twice, we said, let's get this culvert in now along with Harris County's project. And so that's why you see these, uh, the two flags on the screen with the culvert being constructed now, but then the, the rest of the project sort of wrapping up in this preliminary engineering stage at the same time. Thank you so much for that information. Um, and it looks like we are getting a few comments about safety concerns. Um, somebody shared uh, some safety concerns on the current project, which will um, we wanna reassure everyone that we will share all of these uh, safety concerns with Harris County Engineering Department and the precinct as well. A uh, question for Emmanuel. Emmanuel, how is this project being funded? All right, so uh, this project is being funded through um, through a 2018 bond program and the funding will you know, cover the project all through um, to the end of the construction stage. Thank you for that information. Uh, Jonathan, another question for you. Will this project eliminate flooding in this area? Well, we can never say that any project is going to eliminate flooding in any area, but we can say that this project once constructed uh, will reduce the risk of flooding. And we, we talked about how that's gonna happen a little bit earlier um, when I discussed how, how the culvert and, and then future detention basin um, provide more capacity in the channel and, and that helps, pr helps reduce the risk of the channel overflowing uh, as well as helps increase the performance of your, your localized storm sewers and roadside ditches. And, and so, uh, we, we, like I said, we, we certainly can't say that anything is going to eliminate flooding, but we are reducing uh, the risk. Thank you so much for that explanation. Uh, Emmanuel, a question for you. If you are improving flooding on this area, are you just flooding another area as a result? Uh, thank you, Melda. That, that's, that's a great uh, question and you know, valid concern. Now, the Flood Control District is a no adverse impact agency. And uh, 
what happens is that project engineers must ensure that improvements made on one part of the channel will not increase flooding on another part of the channel. All new developments generally within Harris County must comply with strict requirements for detention. Now, uh, part of the development criteria, you know, the development criteria have been in place for, you know, about 30, for the last 30 years, and it's always required for, you know, any development in the county. Now, this criteria um, is, I mean, this, this, this criteria is required for all new developments to mitigate for, um, um, or rather, all new developments are required to mitigate for flooding or drainage impacts that may be caused by, you know, as a result of their, you know, development. Thank you so much for that information. Um, and we are getting a little bit close to the end of the meeting, but we want to reassure everyone that you can continue to submit comments about this project um, after the meeting is over. You may visit hcfcd.org forward slash F95 and continue to submit questions there. Um, and again, I want to remind everyone that any questions not addressed during tonight's Q&A will still receive a response from the Flood Control District following the close of the comment period. Uh, we have time for a couple more questions here. Uh, Jonathan, is this the first time the community is hearing about this project? Um, so Harris County has had or has sent uh, a couple of notices in advance of the current construction work on Anderson Road. Um, and, and so I believe those, uh, those messages have, have been sent on the, on the Anderson Road. Um, project, this specific uh, flood control district C-144 project. This is the first that we are talking to the community about this one. Um, and then also I mentioned, I think towards the beginning of the program that the flood control district uh, did hold community meetings on the bond program as a whole back in January of 2019. Thank you so much for that information. A question for Emmanuel, which is better, wet or dry bottom basins? All right, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Jonathan, go ahead. Okay, yeah, I can, I can jump in and take it. So um, the, uh, the easy answer is, is just to say it depends, and, and it really does depend. That's, that's not a, a cop out. Um, we, when we do these preliminary engineering studies, um, that's one of the things we look at is uh, which type of basin is going to uh, function better given the, uh, the size and, and shape um, and, and other parameters like the, the type of channel that is adjacent to it, um, the inflow and outflow, how, how water gets in and out of the basin. Um, and so there, there's a lot of factors that come into play when we look at which type of basin um, that, uh, that we put in. Now, I will say that a lot of the time, a wet bottom stormwater detention basin can hold a little bit more volume than, uh, than a, a similarly sized dry bottom detention basin. And that's because the wet bottom of that basin itself is flat with, with a water surface. Uh, you have a flat bottom. When you look at a dry bottom, like the detention basin picture on the right, uh, the bottom of that basin actually has to be sloped so that it can drain and be maintained. And when you have a sloped basin like that, uh, you do lose a little bit of volume. Um, but there's other factors to consider when we look at these these features uh, certainly wet bottom basins are going to be more expensive. You have to you have to excavate more. You have to excavate underneath. Uh, that water surface that you see there. And so there's really a lot of factors that go into play and, and it's certainly not an easy answer as to say which is best because it just always depends on the situation. Thank you, Jonathan, for that information. We wanna share a comment from one of our viewers, uh, Taryn. He commented that the sidewalks will be fantastic for the students who walk to Yesprip Academy. And he's saying thank you for that. Um, and then lastly, Jonathan, can uh, can you share really quickly what other opportunities will there be for public input on this project? Um, sure. So you can always go to our web website, hcfcd.org slash F95. Um, 
and uh, and and submit your input. Oh, I see there. Sorry, submit a comment. You can submit a comment uh, always at publicinput.com slash c one four four trib t r i b, um, and then. Again, uh, once we do get into the design stage for this project, we would hold uh, another community engagement meeting uh, to get your feedback as well. Great, thank you both so much for your input tonight uh, and for all the amazing information you share with the community. And with that, I would like to share one final reminder that we are continuing to accept comments and feedback on this project through April 14th. We also encourage everyone to get flood insurance as flood season in Harris County runs year round. Thank you again for joining us this evening and for your engagement with this project. We look forward to continuing to share updates as our work moves forward. Stay safe and have a good evening.